Welcome to the dark forest. Jackie and her pals will never bore us. Shameless confessions about our obsession will make us laugh and smile. So let's explore the dark forest and dark down for a while. Hi, I'm Jackie Cation. You are about to listen to the dark forest. Let's give you the info about it. First of all, you know the websites. Dorkforest.com, thedorkforest.com, if you like a determiner, jackiecation.com has everything. All of my podcasts, including uh, videos of my stand-up, my stand-up schedule, merchandise you can purchase if you would like, and a lot more info than you possibly even need. Let's do the credits. Mike Rickberg sang and produced and composed that song at the beginning of the show. He sang with his wife, Sarah. It's very beautiful. At the end of the program, he sings his version of the Mexican hat dance. That's Mike Rickberg. Vilmos fixes JackieCation.com. He is uh, the web designer over there. And Patrick Brady fixes the audio. And in this case, there's a video intro. Very exciting. Anyway, those are the websites. If you want to support the show, you're doing it already by listening to it or watching it. And another way is to tell your friends and family, go on iTunes, do a review. Another way is to just give me money. Yeah. You could use the donate button. You can make it even monthly if you're okay with making things monthly. You do a PayPal monthly. There's a monthly choice on PayPal. The PayPal is a button on the Jackie Cation or the Dork Forest website, and it goes directly to me. Thank you very much. I will use it wisely or foolishly. Your call as well. Now, my email address, Jackie at JackieCation.com, is where you can contact me if you have any questions or concerns and about the Dork Forest. And I do have a Venmo account. It's Jackie hyphen Cation, oddly enough. Another way to support the show is on DorkForest.com and JackieCation.com. There's an Amazon link. And the Amazon link just takes you to Amazon. You order like normal, and it supports the show because you came from Jackie Cation or DorkForest.com. Very exciting. Other than that, oh, there are there is a band camp. You can if you have listened to all the episodes that are free and you need more content, there are several live episodes that are at the dorkforest.bandcamp.com. And those cost me a couple of bucks, so I charge a couple of bucks. There's also a storytelling album there that you can listen to some stories that I did live. And there are 17 free episodes before The Dork Forest was pre-recorded. So the audio isn't very good, but the guests were super funny and fun and dorky. So if you want to do that, go to the thedorkforest.bandcamp.com. Other than that, let's see if there are other things that I should be talking about. Possibly uh, the merch. Yeah, if you want to buy merch. The only other thing I want to talk about is the merch. You can get Dork Forest t-shirts uh, and you can get stand-up comedy t-shirts. You can get my albums or my DVD over at JackieCation.com slash merch. There's pins, there's a challenge coin, there's a bunch of new things happening over there. Anyway, a lot of information. I think, I don't think I've missed anything, but who cares? Let's get into the show. Hi, I'm Jackie Cation. I'm in my garage in Van Nuys. Who am I with? Longtime Ranger. Longtime Ranger, huge fan of the program, real supporter, real supporter of the stand up comedy. That's right. It is. Uh, wow, I wonder, Dar, if I'm going to say your name wrong. Uh, Vendega? No, wrong. <laughs> Fail. Uh, please introduce <laughs> yourself to your fellow Rangers of the Dork Forest. My name is Darlene. My last name is Vendenya. Vendenya. Ha, fail. Yes. Now let me Epic now fail. I have to I have to tell you it's funny because growing up, my last name was pronounced with all the other Americans in my neighborhood as Vendegna, right? Okay. But then I started then I started studying Italian and I learned that actually it's Vendenya, like lasagna. Vendenya. Well Vendegna. here's what I know. So uh, I said it wrong, uh -huh. and I'm going to call you yeah, Dar. That's fine. And that's uh, fine, your of Twitter handle, of course, is just Dar eight two six J yes U S T D A R eight two six. That's right. That and, is correct. Uh, what we have here is we have a small amount of uh, pickleball rebuttal, and just really we're just adding. That's the thing about dorkdoms about adding. the same things. Yeah. You just it's a layer. 
I've had many chess dorks on, have I? I think just one. Anyway, but if uh, we could talk about the same dorkdoms over and over and over again, and we'll get a different view every time. So, Dar, talk to me about the fine game of pickleball. I would love to. Okay, so you're wearing your shirt. Trying, you're wearing your pickleball. I'm wearing my pickleball shirt, and I was late to this because I was playing an extra game. And I'm here's my hat, and I'm I'm dipped, I'm dipped, <laughs> and I don't really want to. I'm not really rebutting what um the gal who was on Christine Black was on before Story-worthy. Christine. She just there was just a few things, and um I love her enthusiasm. Oh yeah, um, that's all, that's what so, you're looking for when you play pickleball. Oh absolutely, is someone who wants absolutely. to play. Absolutely. Oh my God, absolutely. And every day, more and more people. I, I was just gave eight people a lesson, and uh, they didn't want me to leave because they wanted to keep playing. It's really, it's really super addicting. If anybody, and I've taught people who never even did any sport at all, or maybe they like swam okay. or something, <laughs> and they don't, they, they've had virtually no hand-eye coordination. Okay. But you know, it's like, it's just fun. I mean, it's a silly, stupid, hard plastic ball and a giant ping pong paddle. Okay. And it's on a little court that is like one fourth, not half, like she said one quarter the size of a tennis court. Right. You can fit four pickleball courts on one tennis court. That's it. Okay, mm-hmm. that's it. Um, what else? It started in Bainbridge Island with Washington, like she said, and as she said, it was a couple of dads with bored kids, so they went in the garage and said, oh, here's a wiffle ball, here's some ping pong paddles, and here's an old rickety badminton net. What can we do? Wow. And, and they what became, year was that? When was that? It was like 1968. Eight. Wait, it was the 60s. Oh, my gosh. So it's been around. Yeah. It's been around, but, you know, it, it stayed pretty much in the Pacific Northwest, I think, for a little while. And then little by little, people started having it in their schools, and it kind of worked east. It or East, yeah, east. So it's been growing, and, and because it's a game that people who maybe can't play tennis anymore, because oh, be- it's a lot more running. Right, cause, and it's a smaller it's a smaller space, but it's they cool. love they love the, the, the racket they game. They love playing. Yeah. They love, well, you know, you know the song... Um, from the 60s, Wanderer, I'm the kind of guy who <laughs> loves to run around. So I wrote, I, I put lyrics to that. I'm the kind of gal who loves to hit a ball. <laughs> I've gone from court to Welcome court to the and forest. I love to hit them all. <laughs> yes, there we go. Yay. So anyway, yeah. So the only, so, so she was really right on with everything except the, um, except the size of the court and no, she, she actually did say a fourth at one point, but I think I, she did? Okay. And I repeated, I have a question. Uh, why yes. pickle? That's an excellent question, Thank you and I have and I have the answer. Oh, so, legend had it that the family had a dog named Pickles that used to run and get the ball. Okay. So that's but that's the easy story. Oh, it, the true. Uh, I know. It's a good but one. the true the true story is that the sport is made up of a bunch of different things, a bunch of different kind of leftovers that were all put together to make one new thing. Uh. The wife of one of the guys mm-hmm, mm-hmm. rode, rode crew, right? The Sure. Right. And in crew, <clears throat> there is a term for a boat that is assembled of leftover players. Okay. Extra players. And that boat is called, guess what? Pickle boat? The pickle boat. Pickle boat. Yes. <gasps> yes. So this mom said, boy, this game is like a pickle boat. It's all leftover things. And thus the name was born. This but is because fascinating. That's a lot, right? So because, but because that's a lot longer story and people are like, oh, what? A pickle boat? What? The dog thing kind of uh, the more prevalent. They're both good because it, it makes, it makes you think, uh, this is pickles ball. And because uh, right, exactly. pickle would go get the ball, but I do like. Yeah. Uh, uh, have you ever checked to see if in crew that is true? It is true. I asked other crew people. Fair that. enough. Fair enough. I like. Yep. I like. It I, is a true fact. I love a second source. You know me. That's right. I, love a, I know. A, I know you do. Who doesn't <laughs> like a second source? Uh, Boy, this. What's what's going okay. on? Yeah, you got COVID oh, just, here. You got a lot of hair going I on. I have COVID. I got a lot of hair. Actually, this is a cut, believe it or not. But I'm just looking. I have a light right above me, and it's really accentuating 
my white hair. It's not <laughs> quite this white. Let me, if I darken it, you'll see that there's actually still some brown in there. It's uh, anyway. it's a, it's a so, cool, yeah. it's a cool color. It looks great. We're going, Thank Dork you. Forest, just for people who are listening, you got to know that I'm also putting up the video. The Zoom video is available for people to oh, uh, take a look and see, uh, I don't know, what my garage looks like when it's been painted yeah. white. So I've got, yeah, you're, it's looking good though. It, it is look good. You're not calling it a she shed, huh? You're calling it the garage. No, it's the Tiberius Dracus Memorial uh, attachment Lovely. to the uh, to the to the thing, and, and that that is a picture of Tiberius over there, Aww. and he is buried uh, under the cement where that picture is. Is so. it the picture with him wearing a top hat? Wasn't there a picture somebody did it, of him with a Irish, little top hat? It was hat? an Irish bowler, and it was for yes. and Andy put that on him for uh, for one of them oh. uh, one of them holidays, and uh, he could he was not pleased. He was he was uh, he was I think, uninterested. I feel, like, I feel like I saw a picture Carmen put up where she put some Ooh. kind of outfit on him or something. I don't remember. Who knows? <laughs> she I love did her that by picture. the way. Oh yeah, Carmen Morales. A delight. I love her. A delight yeah, of humanity. A, a true delight. She, for my birthday, so, she brought over, uh, I don't know why I'm telling, but for my birthday, she brought over, she said, what haven't you had here in quarantine? And I said, uh, grocery store sushi. Uh, I have not had sushi. Uh, please go to the grocery store. And you wanted that? Yeah. Yeah, that's what I wanted. And she said, I'm not bringing you fucking grocery store sushi. What is your favorite Add sushi a girl place? Car. And then she went and stood in line and uh, an hour and then spent far too much money and brought it. And I was like, when your birthday comes, and she's like... Nope, not going to let it happen. Just going to suck it up and accept it, Cation. So uh, that's where we're at. That's where we're at. So I have a question regarding your birthday. Okay. Were you served coffee? I was served. Uh, <laughs> people should know that uh, Darlene Vendenia, uh sent an apron to Andy Ashcraft. Uh, a frilly apron. A frilly weirdo <laughs> apron that he took and I texted you if I remember if I believe I sent you a picture of him. You did. Oh, it's in a place of honor. <laughs> I'm, I'm going to save it. He uh, was only you know, wearing blackmail. his underpants underneath uh, this uh, apron because he thought it was funny. And he was right. He looked fetching. He was very <laughs> fetching. Hands akimbo upon his hips. And uh, he did make me coffee and it was a delight. Uh, I spent that day essentially sleeping and eating, eating and sleeping. One of the great ways to spend a birthday. What else? And uh, yeah. the eating part got a little out of hand and I did wake up feeling like a snake that had eaten a mouse. Oh, anyway, I hate that. Uh, it's a lot. I know that feeling. I know that feeling. Let's talk more about the quality okay. game of pickleball. Okay. So it's because so there's not as much running because it's a, a real small court. Right. Uh, it gets to bounce once. So the serve is underhand. Okay. And it bounces and yes, and so you serve it underhand, like think bowling. I know you know bowling. You're from Wisconsin. <laughs> so think the bowling motion. Right. Underhand, you serve it kitty corner across court and it has to bounce before the receiver hits it then when it comes back to the other side when it comes back to the serving side the serving side also has to wait for it to bounce before they hit it okay so they call that they call that a two bounce rule okay after after those two bounces have been accomplished then the ball can be hit on a fly or on a bounce but not more than one bounce ever. Correct. And not more than one bounce ever. When you ever. serve it, uh, you that's why people serve in racket sports uh, where it bounces super far right on the line so nobody has a chance to get to it because you have to let it bounce. Exactly right. Right on. Exactly right. Exactly right. So I'll always tell people when I'm teaching people, they'll, because the, the – so picture a tennis court. Mm -hmm. Okay, so you know how a tennis court has like – the two boxes kind of in the front, yeah, and then two boxes in the back. And when and when you serve, you serve into the front box, yeah. right? So in pickle pickleball also has a front box and a back box, but in pickleball the serve goes into the back box. It goes into the further box. Oh, interesting. So sometimes people will want to stand up a little bit closer. Mm -hmm. But the thing about that is, like you said, if I serve it back to that back line. They have to wait for it to bounce, right? So I always say you can stand wherever the hell you want, but if you stand there, I'm serving it behind you. <laughs> so that's the thing. Right. So, so then, so there's so that 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 box up front. It's actually not a box. It's actually a rectangle. It's the length or it's the width of the whole court. Okay. So it's twenty. So it's twenty feet wide. Mm -hmm. 
That's the that's the width of the court, and it's a there's a line seven feet from the net. Okay, so you've got the net, and then you've got essentially a seven by twenty foot box. And that's the that front box. box. Yes. Okay. That is called the kitchen. I don't know why. <laughs> Uh, the real I name think that for the dog it. Named it. Anyway, go. Probably. But what it is, though, the official name for it is the non-volley zone. Okay. And okay, and a volley is a ball hit in the air, not on a bounce. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Right. So a ball comes over the net on a fly. If you're in the non-volley zone, you cannot hit it. Okay. It has to. All right. So you stay back. And you wait for a bounce before you hit the ball. If you're up at the kitchen line, you can hit it on a fly, but you have to be sure you're behind the kitchen line. And that's the whole game? That's the whole game. The whole game. game, you can't be in that non-volley zone. You can't be in no, that no. kitchen zone. You can go in the kitchen to catch a ball off a bounce and hit it. Okay. But you can't. You don't want to stay there because if you go into the kitchen and legally hit a ball off a bounce, you better get your ass back out of the kitchen because if you don't, your opponent is going to hit a fly right at you. Uh -huh. And if you're not back out of the kitchen, you can't do anything with it. Because you can't just hit it. Uh, it has to bounce. In, it has in, to if, bounce. If you're in the kitchen and the ball's in the kitchen, it's got to bounce. You can't just slam it back at them in the Correct. air. Correct. Okay. If you're in the kitchen. Also, if you are at the kitchen line and a fly ball comes, you can slam it, but you better not then step into the kitchen. So your momentum can't carry you into the kitchen. Okay. Also, you, also you can't slam it and then have the paddle touch the kitchen. Oh, it can't go over the line in the well, air. Well, no, it can go over the line. It can go. It can go over the visuals here. Yes. I love it. it can, say this is the line. It can. You can go over the line, right, in the air. But if you, for whatever reason, come down and your paddle touches the ground uh -huh. in the kitchen, that's a fault. If you jump up, like I wouldn't, but some people can jump. If somebody jumps up to hit a slam, that's awesome. But they better make sure they come down behind the kitchen line. Because if their foot comes down on the kitchen line or in the kitchen, that's a fault. This sounds like uh, the kids were writing some rules. Yeah, that's what it sounds like. There's like It's super fun. <laughs> it's super fun. And the thing about it is because the court is so small, so the court is 20 feet wide. Yep. And then Seven it's feet from deep. the net. No, no. The total length of the court from the net to the... To the back line, to the baseline, is 22 feet. Okay. Okay. So a whole court then is 20 by 44 mm -hmm. from end to end. Okay. So each half of a court, right, is 20 by 22. Seven of those 22 are the kitchen. That's it. Right. And the other 15 are just the left or the right side of the box. Right. And and real playable. And Right. And now Christine was talking about doubles and singles. Yes. Yes. And um, you said that plenty of people are playing singles at this point, yes. right? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Because technically, we're not allowed to play single and uh, not allowed to play doubles unless our partner is uh, somebody in our pod. Okay. Ideally, uh, ideally our own partner. You know, like Peggy and I play, yeah. thankfully, or a really good friend and a who who I know has not been you know licking doorknobs or something. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Right. And, and technically, you know, most of the parks say singles only yep. unless it's a partner. And some places require you to wear a mask. Right. Very. And and some people are real sticklers about if you're on this court, you have to wear a mask. Others are like, let's just not, you know, let's just not get close. Some people don't want you to. So you have a plastic, the hard plastic ball. Some people will insist that they only want to use their ball when they're because you touch the ball when you serve it. Right. right. You hold it out of your hand. And you serve it kind of out of your hand. Okay. Right? So so this is kind of the motion, right? Yep. So that's the only time that a hand really has to touch a ball. Generally, you know, if I serve a ball and they miss it, they'll they'll bump it back to me with their paddle because they don't they might not want to touch my ball. Right. And then when they go to serve, they have their own ball. 
I see. So there's that. And so in, in doubles, um, both players serve. They take turns. You only score when you serve. So there's server one. They call the score. They call their score, their opponent's score, and then whether they're the first or the second server. What? So I Wait would a serve. Minute. Slow it down. Yeah, yeah. Unpack it. So okay. um, so you're starting. So someone serves initially. Right, like the very, yeah, yeah. So I I have to preface that though by this explanation. So two people on each side, right? There's going to be a server one who's going to serve until they're done. Okay. When they're done, like they miss it or whatever, then server two serves, and they serve until they're done. So okay? the side serves. What? Both of them serve. Uh, yes. Back, back to back until they're done scoring. Yes. And then until it goes done across scoring. the net. Yeah. So after server two is done. Then it's side out, and it goes to the other side. And the person, so there's two boxes, right? There's the right box and the left box. Mm -hmm. Let's call it the even box and the odd box. Okay. Okay, I say that because at the beginning of a game, when the score is zero and zero, the person on the right is in the even box and is serving across court. Kitty corner. To the other even, kitty corner to the other even box. Mm -hmm. So it's zero and zero. Mm -hmm. If I get a point, my partner and I are going to switch sides. Okay. We do what we fondly call the victory switch. <laughs> so I'm here. Mm -hmm. I've served. I got a point. Now I'm here. I'm in the odd box with a, with a score of one. Now I'm serving to the odd receiver. Okay. Because you're right. there's only one side will make that switch, and what only what, what, the serving side, only the person who gets only the team that gets a point makes a switch. And they only and they, and do they do it every time they make a point? Yes. So you're like, okay, I'm on the even side. I made a point. Now I switch sides, and I still have that that point travels with me. Yes. Yes. Now my team has one point. Okay, and, and and now I'm serving from the odd court. Okay, and you keep serving until you break it, right? Until it until I yeah, until I'm broken, right? Until I miss it. Okay. Or whatever. So I'm done. I was server one. Right. I'm done. Let's say I just got that one point. Mm -hmm. Now my partner is over here. They're gonna call the score as one mm -hmm. zero. Yep. And then they're gonna say that they're server two. And server two is going to serve to their kitty corner, which at the same at this point will it's, also be that same server one for them. That yes, exactly okay. right, exactly right. Okay, so when server two is done, then the whole sides out. It's side out. The, it's side out. Right, and then it go. Then we're done scoring. Yeah. for that for that round. So now it goes to the other side, and it goes to the person who's in the even box. And they start serving. And they're server one. And they one. call their score. Right. And they call the score zero, one, and they say they're number one. Okay. Because then they, then they switch and they serve and they switch and they serve. But when you, they're you done, say whatever your score is first is what you're, what yes. you're trying to explain. And I appreciate yes. this detail. Uh, because, yes. uh, and, and it's just, and what do you play up to? You play to 11. Okay. Wow. But yeah, but so there, but here's the one, the reason I wanted to give you that all that stuff is because because you only score when you serve it's really conceivable that if two people serve they could get all the points and win yeah right away so in order to equalize that at the beginning of a game at the start the person in the right hand box serves first but they call the score as 0 0 and they say that they're two even though they're the first server of the game, mm -hmm. they call themselves the second server because, in general, when server two is done, it's side out and it goes to the other side. Oh, so as the game begins, whoever starts only gets sort of one person on their team to only, play initially. Yes, exactly right. Exactly right. When the game begins... Just to begins, make sure that you don't run over the game. Exactly right. Okay. Exactly right. Exactly right. So that's, that's, that's the doubles thing. Hey, my ad, my ad, my ad, we're about to do an ad. Rangers, we're doing an ad for BetterHelp.com. And if you go to BetterHelp, B-E-T-T-E-R-H-E-L-P.com slash dork, 
you get 10% off your first month. And what it is, is it's professional counseling. It's not a crisis line. It's not self-help. These are licensed professional counselors. And you can get 10% off your first month. Uh, it's a little stressful out there right now. A little outside help, not out of line. Uh, so many people have been using BetterHelp that they're uh, recruiting additional counselors in all 50 states. It's professional. It's affordable. It's convenient. Uh, it's safe. It's secure. All of these things. So obviously anything you share is confidential and over a million people are doing it right now. So if you go to betterhelp.com slash dork, you get 10% off your first month. And I'm a big fan of counseling, of licensed professional counselors talking you through uh, other problems, all the problems you might have. You know, you could be confused why you're not happy all the time. You could, uh, which of course is impossible, but you could talk to somebody about it, right? You can, you could have goals. You can say, why am I not reaching my goals? You can, they can, ex they assess your needs and they match you with a licensed professional therapist. So it's safe, private online environment. It's, you can send a mess, a message to your counselor at any time. You know, it's. They could be video sessions. They could be uh, phone sessions. So that's what I'm saying. This is good stuff. There's no reason not to try this. And you get 10% off your first month. Give it a shot. Betterhelp.com slash dork. Help. H-E-L-P. Not health. B-E-T-T-E-R. H-E-L-P dot com slash dork. Okay. Let's get back into the show. So, the, so sometimes with beginners, sometimes they'll say, okay, at the beginning of the game, call the score is zero, zero, start. Okay. Then when you're done, it'll go to one and two, and then it'll come back to one and two. Okay. So that's always people get a little confused with that, but eventually they get it. And when I explain the whole one, two, and then I say, oh, but at the beginning. It's different. It's different. They get it generally. Yeah, they get and it. So and, and, and they can they can then see the reason for it too. So exactly which right. will help exactly explain. Right. And because you know what people want? A reason. Exactly. <laughs> it's like, we'll, we'll do it however yeah. you, if you have a reason for it, by God, I'm willing to make that adjustment. Absolutely. As long as I can Absolutely. understand why we're doing it. I don't know why I need yeah. to know why, but it, once I know why, now you know. I don't care. Yeah. Yeah. And then once people play a couple points, they kind of understand it. Right. And so the thing is, so after you've done, so the, so at the beginning of a game, the serving side, both players stay back at the baseline. Because they're going to have to wait for the person who returns the ball to hit it back, and you and they have to wait for it to bounce before they hit it. Okay, but on the receiving side, the person, the only person who has to be at the baseline is the person who's receiving the serve. Their partner is going to be up at the kitchen line. Right, because they can right? be. They can be because they don't have to worry about a bounce. Because they, they they got backup. Exactly right. Well, yeah, but also the idea, the general, the general rule, but sort of concept of the game, strategy of the game, let's call it, is the team that gets to the kitchen line first mm -hmm. kind of controls the game. Because if you think about it, it's, each person only has to cover, if they can get up to that line, they only have to cover a space that's 10 feet wide mm -hmm. and 7 feet deep. So really, most of us can shift back and forth. There, there's a big is enough reach. Excuse me. Do I hear an ice cream truck? There is an ice cream truck. Ice cream! <laughs> you, uh, it's interesting you can hear the ice cream truck. Could you also hear the garbage truck and the helicopters earlier? Probably. No, no, I didn't. Okay. I am programmed for ice cream trucks only. <laughs> Look at me. Look at me. Look at me. It's ice cream. Look at me. Anyway. Anyway. So, so anyway, so yeah, so the, 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 um, the, the theory, I, I, I've lost my words. The, um, the, it's, you try to get to the kitchen line first because then you can dominate. So the receiving side, half their team is already at the kitchen line, okay. is already in a dominant position, mm -hmm, right? Mm -hmm. So when, when the server serves the ball to the receiver, the receiver hits the ball back mm -hmm. and tries to get up to the kitchen line as quickly as they can. Because then they're so both... They, then they're then they're then they're the wall, right? Mm -hmm. Meanwhile, me and my partner, we're back there. We don't know which of you, which of us, we're going to get the ball. So we both have to stay back. Right. What we should do is watch the ball come back to us. And if I see the ball is coming back, coming back to my partner, I'm going to start moving up. Right. 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 
So that's kind of the strategy. There's a little People bit of a, play a lot, of, lot of trust there. A lot of trust. You're like, obviously, I don't need to, I don't need to, but you got this. Yes. Sort of like in baseball exactly when right. you call it. You're like, yeah, exactly. Got it. There's a lot of calling. Yeah. There's a lot of calling. And especially, I'm left handed. Mm-hmm. So especially, there's a lot of calling if I'm playing somebody. You know, 95% of the time, it's somebody who's right-handed. Right. So if we're standing next to each other, both of us have our forehands in the middle. Ah. Right? So we always have to call it. Yeah. And Because for the mo- most part, when two people, two right-handed people or two left-handed people are playing, there's only one forehand in the middle. Yeah. So you can easily say, hey, if a ball comes up the middle, you get it. It's your forehand. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And there's no, you know, you don't have to say, oh, that's on your side of the line. You should get it. It's kind of like who's ever in the best position mm-hmm. kind of a thing. Okay. Jackie, it's super fun. And the other thing is because it's not a big court, it's it's 20 feet by 22, you're close. You're fairly close to each other, which is why they are kind of frowning upon doubles because of, you know, all that. But you're close and you just laugh. I mean, oh, my God. The other day, we something happened. I forget what the hell it was. <laughs> we... Three, three of the four of us were la- literally on our backs rolling. We were laughing so hard because it's a little hard. Did I mention it's a little hard plastic ball with holes? Right. So How it looks like a laugh? wiffle ball, right? It does sort of a wiffle but ball, smaller. though, if you remember. Well, no, it, it's about the same size as a wiffle ball. Maybe it's about the same size as a wiffle ball. What's different, though, is it's a tiny bit heavier. Oh. And the ball and, and the holes are round. Versus, if you remember back in wiffle ball times, <laughs> wiffle balls have narrow, have narrow like rectangular holes. Okay. Okay. Wh- right. Um, yes, the little known wiffle ball times. Um, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So the, they're they're a little bit heavier, and um, the balls are the holes are different. And there's two different there's indoor balls and there's outdoor balls. So interesting. Indoor yeah, indoor balls are a little bit lighter lighter well they're a little, definitely a little bit softer okay and they and they only have 26 holes okay yeah they're a little bit so- i have notes i made notes Good. they're a little bit softer and a little bit lighter and they only have 26 holes and they weigh about 0. 0.8 0. 0.8 ounce so so they're pretty light that's light that's light an outdoor ball has 40 holes they're a little bit smaller, and it weighs 0.9 ounce, you know, give or take. Interesting. So it's a, it's a skosh heavier because of the wind, right? I mean, if you're indoors, right, you don't have to. How is, it, and, is it a pretty good bouncer, though, if it's a wiffle ball? You know what? It If it bounces more than 30 inches, it's remarkable, mm. and it's because it was slammed down really hard. Right. Right. And you know, I mean it bounces. Yeah. It bounces. Okay. But it doesn't bounce it doesn't bounce like a tennis ball right. or like a golf ball. Oh no. No. It it does bounce, but not a lot. And do they and, and I remember Christine talking about the like they crack pretty easily. Well, there is a type of player that I fondly refer to and many of us fondly <laughs> refer to as a banger. Okay. <laughs> and a banger is some they're they're lovely people <laughs> but they hit the ball really hard yeah they tend to be dudes not always but they tend to be dudes they don't know their and own they strength often, man they don't know their own strength and a lot of them tend to be they played tennis okay right right so they're coming from a tennis background so the balls and especially some of the brands are a little bit um little tiny bit lighter and um and yeah, a little bit lighter, and the plastic is a little bit harder, so it makes them a little bit more brittle. Okay. So they will they will definitely crack, but you can generally even those balls. If you're just an, a regular player and you do some banging, but not all banging, mm-hmm. you should be able to get maybe f- five games out of it at least. Sometimes more. I've got balls I've been playing with for a long time. Okay. And then it depends on the surface you play. And if you play on a nice like a nice tennis court surface a ball will stay relatively smooth and it could last you a long time. But if you play in some of the Fakakta courts I play on <laughs> that are sandy and crappy, okay. two two games in and I've got this rough ball that just doesn't play the same. Fair enough. Fair enough. So, so indoor game though, um, yeah. so it's asphalt. I don't even know what tennis courts are made out of, quite honestly. Tennis courts are typically made of, well, it depends. You know, a lot of them are, are um, clay. Okay. 
or some kind of an asphalty kind of thing with some kind of a fancy coating yeah. that makes them a little bit softer. A little bit I don't softer. Really They're know. not like basketball courts. Uh, outdoor no. basketball courts are a little softer than that, right? Oh, well, no, no, no. An outdoor basketball court could be a lot softer. In fact, there's one by where I play that's like virtually cushy. I don't know why. Okay. I don't know why. Okay. But a lot of indoor courts, a lot of times indoor play is on basketball courts or gym floors. Okay. Or just gym floors, you know. There's a place here. It's closed now, of course, because of COVID times. But there's a, actually a um, a badminton center here. Okay. In Emeryville, in fact, if you've ever seen Gina Yashere's stand-up act, I, she talks about that particular badminton court and going there as an African-looking woman mm-hmm. to where all the Asian people are playing. Oh, okay. And, you know, right. And I know exactly where. And she's tr- she's right. All the badminton players there are, I would say, 95% some Asian persuasion. Mm-hmm. They A badminton court is the same size as a pickleball court. Okay. There's, there's a... One slight difference, but the the width and the length are the same. Okay. So bad pickleball can be played on a badminton court. There's one adjustment to the line to the line from the net. So they let us play. So we bring in portable nets. Okay. And set them up, and we play on the badminton courts indoors. Okay. And that works really well, except there's no ventilation, so it gets really hot. But <laughs> it's a nice it's a nice surface. Oh, yeah. fair enough. And now the net itself. Um, is low. Well, the uh, a tennis net is 36 inches high. Okay. Well, this was one of the rebuttals, yeah. The tennis net is 36 inches high. A pickleball net is 36 inches high as well at the end, but in the center it's 34. Wait. So it's a tiny bit lower in the center. It's only two inches, so it's not like it's a big difference. But it's just a two inches lower what? in the center versus on the end. Was there some sort of, was there a sagging? And they're like, we're keeping it. We're keeping the sagging. I, you know what? Yeah. Probably. <laughs> Who knows? I don't know why that is. So when you, so a lot of times we'll play on a tennis court because there, there, where I live, there aren't a lot of, ba- a lot of pickleball courts. Mm-hmm. So we will, we will often play on a, on a tennis court and we will just, a lot of tennis courts have a strap so you can tighten the net down. So we'll lower the net a little bit. Okay. And we'll often, we'll often, because we, you know, we're not playing for money and we don't really give a right. shit. We'll just play <laughs> and we'll use a tennis court because a tennis court, so think about it, the service box of a tennis court. Yeah. So, so a tennis court is significantly wider than a pickleball court. I want to say it's, I don't know if I made that note. I forget how wide it is, right. but it's, it's wider than a tennis court, than a pickleball court. But the line between the net and the service box is uh, is 21 feet, right? Okay. Whereas a pickleball court is 22 feet, So you right? can kind of just so use that big space? We just use that. We'll draw a line, we'll draw a line or lay – we have vinyl strips because I'm a sport dork. I have it all. I have these vinyl strips that we put down. We measure. Peggy's a surveyor. We measure <laughs> seven feet – Seven feet from the net, we lay down these strips. Sure. And that's our kitchen line. Right. Right? So we have the seven feet, and then the line from the kitchen line to the baseline, if we play on a tennis court, is a foot shorter. Okay. But who cares? Not We're you. We're just playing for fun. Yeah, you're, just trying us, to, right? you're just trying to run around and play a little pickleball. Just, just, just trying to run around and hit a ball. What we'll often say is, oh, that was out. But it would have been in on a real court. <laughs> we'll do that kind of thing, you know. Which and that's what is you know, just hilarious to just it's so, yeah. yeah. Which is just like thank you, thank you for for putting that. Yeah, and I'd well, like yeah. to point that out seventeen times during this game. Exactly it's super, right. Exactly right. Because it gets funnier <laughs> every time. Every time it definitely it does. <laughs> and and so and so a lot. So you know, pick, as pickleball has <laughs> grown. It starts out with people hear about the game and they want to try this new game and they say, oh, well, I guess we'll play it on a tennis court because we don't have a pickleball court. And little by little, the tennis people start playing well, saying, well, gee, we want to play it too. And that's how pickleball courts are born. A lot of these, pick, a lot of these tennis courts, they realize some of them, some, not all, some of them are not being used as much. And so the city will agree to, or sometimes, hello, the pickleball players will raise money to get a tennis court resurfaced oh. to be for pickleball courts. Because have you done a tennis, such a thing? Yes, we have. We did that in Berkeley. In Berkeley, there were three 
a lineup of kind of on a on a, a bike path. Mm-hmm. There were three tennis courts all in a row that had not been used for many years and had fallen into ruins, mm-hmm. into disrepair. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But the city was deciding that they were going to resurface those little those tennis courts. There are plenty of tennis courts in Berkeley. Right. So we got together, we started petitions, and I have tons of people that I've taught. We all wrote letters and blah, blah, blah. And we convinced the city to, to let one of the three tennis courts be converted to four pickleball courts, which means that 16 citizens mm-hmm. can play in the space that previously only four could play. Right. So this is one of this is one of my selling points. So the other thing is I'm an ambassador for the USA Pickleball Association. <laughs> Hi, USA Pickleball. So one of my things is to try to get people to play pickleball. That's what I'm best at because I'm kind of a social person. If you haven't noticed no, that about I me, I haven't really. That I never really. So, so I'm not so good at reaching out to towns and and stuff, but I'm doing it a little bit. Mm-hmm. And it's it's a hard road to hoe because in some of these cities, like in Oakland. The guy who is in charge of tennis in Oakland, he's not so fond of pickleball. And he kind of is putting up roadblocks every once in a while. Bit of a tennis to snob. Bingo. Bingo. But little by little, you know, inch by inch. I mean, Jack, I teach this is this week was particularly large, but in, in a week I teach at least a half a dozen people to play. This is in addition to my full time job. Right. What so how did you get that gig? Did you just put it on Craigslist? Wanna learn how to play pickleball? Word of mouth. Word of mouth. Word of mouth. Yeah. You know, the more people I teach, the more people who play and they say, oh, you should learn this fun game. It's really great. Well, where would I learn? Well, you know what? I'm not a good teacher, but you know who is? My friend Dar. And right. here, oh, oh, so so you, you talked about my Twitter handle being JustDar826. Yep. I have another pickle handle. You got a pickle handle? I, I mean, I'm, yes, I have another you get Twitter handle. A Twitter pickle handle? Twiddle, yeah, you can't say that three times fast. So pickleball yeah. and then dar. Pickleball dar okay. at Pickle- gmail.com. Pickleball dar on Twitter. Pickleball dar at gmail.com. If, if anybody out there is up in the Bay Area, would like to learn how to play pickleball, you will meet them in a third location. In a first yes. location, really. I will. Uh, I will meet them at a, at a at a public in a public place where they will be witnesses. And let me ask you this: Is would yes. you recommend? Uh, are do you have to? Uh, are there places to rent the balls and rackets, or do you have to buy? That's a really good question. Most places have loaner paddles. Okay. Uh, if you go to somebody who is a teacher, they will have loaner paddles for you. Okay. If you go to me. If you go to me, I have 25 paddles that you could possibly use. <laughs> uh, are there different and, ones for different kinds? Of, like, Is it like bowling balls? Are there different weights? Yes. Yes, absolutely. There are. And, you know, people will say, oh, my type of paddle is the very best because it's made of whatever, magical, magical substances. <laughs> but, you know, the, what I say to that is it's not the wand. It is the wizard who has the talent. <laughs> So I've played with a lot of different paddles because, again, I'm a sports dork and I like to have the, the gadgets. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So I have a bunch of paddles. And then as an ambassador, I've, I've, been, I've been given paddles and I get shit at a discount and I've won some paddles at different raffles and blah, blah, blah. And I've played with a bunch of different kinds. Paddles, paddles come in a d- bunch of different things. A basic person who goes to a sporting goods store, like they want to play with their kids, it's a great game, by the way, for families. Mm-hmm. You can get a wooden paddle. Okay. Practically. Which way, you know, which is fine for a beginner, Mm -hmm. but once, once a beginner who wants to play starts playing, they're going to quickly realize that they don't want a wooden paddle because if you get, because there's other things that they can be made from, um, that give the ball a little more bounce. Okay. Right. Um, like an aluminum baseball bat kind of, exactly right. Exactly right. Okay. Exactly. Yeah, the ball, the paddle, the ball, the pa- the ball will come off the paddle a little bit differently. Sure. But again, you know, it's not about the wand; it's the wizard. You know. But there are there are a bunch of different really great brands. Um, a good you can get a good you can get a a, a perfectly fine paddle for like forty bucks. Okay. You know, 
You could even get one maybe for a little bit less. It might be made in China, which some people care about, you know, that they don't want to. There is a company that I will plug because Wait, I love their paddles. There's yeah. American-made pickleball paddles? There are plenty of American-made pickleball paddles, <laughs> you yeah. You guys, we're coming back. We're coming back as uh, as the, the pickleball paddle uh, uh, provider of the world. That's going to be yes, our, so our, our industry. Yes. Our mission. So there's a there's a company that is in Ber- in Washington State. Okay. The home of pickleball, remember, the birthplace of pickleball. <laughs> there is a company there called Players, Players Pickleball. Okay. And and they make a bunch of different paddles. I use one of mine that one that's my favorite. It cost me about a hundred dollars or something. Wow. They're, they all they all have g- decent paddles. Have what's called a composite core, and it's made of this stuff that it could be made of um, like aluminum. It could be made of like a fiberglass kind of a thing. Okay. They often have a carbon fiber. The skin, like what actually hits the ball, the surface. Yeah. Is carbon fiber? Wait, is it isn't like one of those ru- rubber things they put on ping pong paddles? Is no, it? no, no, no. That's against the rules. Okay, you can't you can't have some sort of stickum on your paddle. No, paddle's no, got to be paddle one has piece. To be smooth. One piece. Paddle is one piece and smooth. Yeah. And smooth. Yes. Okay. They come in a couple different shapes. There's a standard shape that's a square, essentially a square. Okay. A little rounded, but essentially a square. Sure. There's another shape. There's a couple versions that they call a blade, which is what I use. It's a little bit narrower mm-hmm, mm-hmm. and a little bit longer. Okay. Um, there, there are parameters. Have you ever used one of those uh, those sticks that you put into a pizza oven and then lift up a pizza? You ever? Could you use a super long stick and then just no. No, no, that's a good, that's a good question. Um, no? It, it's funny, it's funny. A pizza, what do they call that thing? I did like just a pizza slide. The other day. A pizza slide? A pizza thing. Yeah, a pizza, it's got a name, I don't know. Pit. Uh, it'll come to me later, another word I've lost. Um, it's, there's a, they can only be from base of the grip. Okay. Base of the grip to top of the paddle. I believe the length limit is like, 18 inches. Okay. So, but there is a Somebody limit. Somebody can rebut. There is a limit. There is a limit to the length and there's a limit to the width. Okay. Within those, you can go any different, you know, my, my, the pedal that I use is a little bit longer. It's still within the guidelines. Sure. But it's it is legal. a little bit longer than a, it's legal. And then there are some that are a little bit wider. They're, they're, they're pushing the limit on the width. Okay. And different kinds of people. I personally like to have a little more reach. Okay. Other people like to have it a little bit wider, mm-hmm. you know. So Players Pickleball, they make paddles. They make a paddle that is kind of their entry-level paddle. It's called the Scout, and it's kind of a composite paddle. It's a paddle that I sell to people all the time because it's a perfectly lovely paddle. It's as good as paddles, dare I say, that cost over $100. Okay. But it's only it's only $50. Okay. Okay. So then they make it's these a other quality paddles, paddle, but it is not. It's a quality top paddle, of the line. and it's American made, okay. and they have a variety of colors, including a lovely rainbow pattern, which, as you can imagine, I like. <laughs> um, Got to represent, uh, yeah. Um, Got to represent the rainbow, and then they make other, and then they make these other lines in different shapes that have a gel core. Which they're a little bit more expensive paddle, and the ball pops off them a little bit better, oh. I think, and you get a little bit more control. You, on gel them. Core. So those paddles, gel, G E L, yeah, core, yeah, and that they're unique. They're the only company that does that. That feels tricksy. That feels. It's very true. It's it. I'm telling you, I, I, it's a great paddle. I love it, and I, I have, I have several. I love them, and um, but for a beginner, these Scout paddles are fantastic. And if you use DAR 10, you get 10% off. Oh, at players. Of it. At, pl- at, at, at players. players yeah, they love me. Things. You can D-A-R players pick one zero. All right. Correct. And get a discount. Get a discount. So, <laughs> yeah. So, the, so, so there's other great manufacturers. Engage is great. Selkirk is great. Head. A lot of the tennis, tennis manufacturers are getting into pickleball now. Like Head is a very well-known tennis, tennis racket. Sure. Maker. And they're making paddles too. Again, you know, I have my favorite. Everybody has their favorite, but it's not the wand; it's the wizard right. that makes a good player. And so, you know what I mean. And what is um, what does I mean? Is it just sort of hand-eye coordination in the eleventh hour? Yeah. Okay. It really is. Yeah. And a little quickness helps too. Like I have really good hand-eye coordination because I've been playing. I've been playing, you know, softball since I was five. Right. 
So I've got pretty good, and I played a lot of racquetball. That was really, rac, and I played a lot of ping pong. We had a ping pong table in my basement growing up. Hello, Chicago. <laughs> we had a, we had a, and so I played a lot of ping pong, and I played a lot. I played, I played with myself a lot. Ping pong, that is. <laughs> <laughs> and so I got really quick with this, you know. Right. And then, and then because I'm left-handed, um, a lefty playing against a righty has a little bit of an advantage because a righty is used to playing against righties. Yes. So the ball the ball spins a little bit differently when a lefty hits it okay. than when a righty hits it. I was playing today against a relatively new player who happens to also be left-handed. Yeah. I was having a hard time. There you go. Because I'm not used to hitting a ball from a left-handed player. That's it. So, yeah. So, yeah, when I was a kid, my, my I had a cousin a couple years older than me who was a jock, you know, he was a football player, wrestler, and he'd bring his buddies over. Mm -hmm. To play ping pong, right? And they'd play, and then they'd let then they'd let Darlene. Okay, sure, you could play Darlene, and I'd spank them every time, <laughs> not because I was particularly good, but because I was lefty. Right, and they're just not used so, to. It. They're so they're not used to it. Yeah. When you do it, so you serve underhanded, and you yes. return the volleys. You're just playing. Yes. You're playing normal. You're just any sort of the any ping pong moves. Any, and I asked Christine. Oh this, yes. Can, can yeah. you do that thing where you kind of slide it and make it spin? Absolutely. Because that is Absolutely. a flat surface. That's a hard flat yeah. surface. You should be should be able when you or serve though spin top spin. Yeah. When, when you serve though, do you have yeah. to serve it from the air? Do you have to throw it up? No, no. No, because remember, contact has to be below your navel. No. I did not know that. What? Yeah, sir yeah, the serve has to be contact with the ball to paddle has to be below your navel. So, so I love you have the visual. So here's my navel. <laughs> that's where you're when keeping it. When I serve it, it yeah. that's where I'm keeping it. It has to be like this. And there, ha so the rules about the serve are, there has to be an upward motion to your serve. Yep. Right. And contact with the ball has to be below your navel. So some people like what I do. I was a pitcher for decades. So I have, I'm really good at this, this, getting this motion, yep. right, where I want it to go. So I just drop it. I drop it and hit it. Okay. I drop it and hit it. Plenty of people, though, will kind of, they'll like position themselves and they'll stand like this. Yeah. Right. And then they'll just hit it out of their, hit it out of their hand. Will they ever do, you know, like in ping pong where you can serve it on yes. a spin. Can yes. you As do As long, the you, you can. You can spin it. As long as there is a down to up motion to your serve. Ah, so you have to spin right? it with with that sort of. Yeah. So in so what I would do if I was going to do that is as I I would have the ball down here and as I was hitting the ball, I would slide it. Okay. Slide it. I mean, most people will just just kind of go straight up and down, bing bing yeah. bing. But someone who's being tricksy will, as they make the. I've, I've accomplished, I'm coming down and going up, but as I'm going up, I'm doing a kind of a twist Turn. with my Turn wrist. with the wrist. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 My serve when I, in ping pong, my serve was always this kind of yeah. thing. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And there are people who do that too, but the, you have to start from down. You have to start, you have from, to start low, from down and go. And you have to and go high. And go high with, yeah. with it, with the, yes. with, with the paddle arm. Essentially, yes. To yeah. get the, the lift, the, the, the head of the paddle has to be below your wrist when you make contact as well. Oh, interesting. So it's yeah. So it, and and you can you can even serve from the side a little bit, but you have to have a little bit of a down to up. You can't just serve just like this, right? Or or even if you're low, you can't just serve parallel to the ground. You have to have a little bit. There has to be the starting point was here. You can't see it. The starting point was here. The ending point has to be here. I get it. it. Has to be a little bit of an upward motion. Is it? It's super fun. It's it's just a fun game that um that is. It sounds like it's pretty simple to play. That that but you but it can be raised to a level with yeah, skill. Absolutely. With skill. Absolutely. And so so after so the players after the two bounces are taken care of, after the receiver has yeah. Right. And it comes after those two bounces. Everybody goes up to the kitchen line in theory. And then you spend a lot of time doing what's called dinking. The good players, the finesse players do this. They get up to the kitchen line and I might hit the same. The person right in front of me, I might hit them the same ball 
I mean, I might just hit to them four or five times. Wait, do you Meanwhile, always? Meanwhile, okay, quick, quick side side thing. Do you always yeah. have to hit underhanded? No. Okay. Good. No. Okay. Only the serve. Right. Only the serve has to be underhanded. But when you're at the line and you're dinking, <laughs> you don't you don't want to risk going into the net. And if you're hitting it gently, mm -hmm. I mean, you can. Mm -hmm. But generally, you're doing this, so you might be like. The other night, we, I was playing with with two people, and Peggy was my Peggy was to my right, and the gal who was directly in front of me, right. So she's on the other side. Of that. They were hitting the ball back and forth like this, going along. So from the left court to the right court, from the you know, from the right court to the right court, from the right court to the right court. Meanwhile, I'm standing there going, "Well, am I ever going to hit the ball?" You know, and. This person was waiting for the moment when I went, I guess I'm not going to hit the ball because that's the moment that that person then hits the ball to me. Oh, right? nice work. So you're lulling me, right? You're mm -hmm. lulling me, or I do it all the time. I'm lulling. I'm hitting to this person or that person consistently. Bink, 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 bink. Meanwhile, the partners are kind of going flat on their feet. Right, right. Thinking, am I, not, am I just ornamental? <laughs> What's going on with me? You're very beautiful. And then they, yes, and then bam. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. So that's the fun of the game. Or if you, or you're doing this little dinky thing to each other, and you're trying to keep it as low to the net as you can. But I hit one low, and my partner, my opponent, goes to hit it, and they hit it in such a way that it comes up high. Uh -huh. Well, guess what I'm going to do, right? I'm going to slam it. As long as I'm behind that kitchen line, mm -hmm. I'm then going to slam it right at their partner or right at them, whatever right, it right. depends on who they but are. But you got to be past that kitchen line. You got to be past that kitchen line. When you make contact. So when you make and, a, when you make you, a when you hit a ball out of the air, you have to be behind the kitchen yeah, line. Yeah, even when you land. And yeah. uh, so interesting. Yeah. So, so yeah. are there so famous where, are there famous pickleball? Yeah. Oh god. Pickleball oh, god. players? Pick Pickleball players, yeah, Simone Hardim, uh, oh, my very favorite, my very, Sarah, Sarah Ansbury. Sarah Ansbury. Sarah Ansbury, S-A-R-A-H-A-N-S-B-O-U-R-Y. -S -S She's a very well-known pro, and she she has um you, she has YouTube's on video. She has videos on YouTube with tips of different different plays to make and different shots to make sure. and how to drill and how to warm up. And, and this is yeah, a time when there's no new sports supposedly for people to watch. So you could watch pickleball. There are, oh my God. Yeah. They've, there's a lot of championships on that are on YouTube. In fact, um, last, oh, so here's the thing about, about tennis and pickleball. So there's a gigantic a uh, tennis compound in Indian Wells, which is Palm Springs ish. Okay. You know, Indian yeah. Wells. It's owned by Larry. Uh, the cable guy. Larry. The cable guy? No, 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 no. The guy who owns one of the big internets. Uh, I forget. La oh, Larry Ellison. Okay. He's a guy. He owns one of the big things. He owns Indian Wells. And Indian Wells has, it's a gigantic tennis complex. Gigantic. And, and they host all these tournaments and everything. And once a year, because the, the courts get a lot of action, once a year they refurbish the tennis courts. Well, in the process of refurbishing, they temporarily refurbish about a dozen full tennis dozen, courts. About a, they they refurbish. There's there's like forty tennis courts, but they refurbish a dozen of the tennis courts temporarily to be pickleball courts. Which means there are then forty-eight pickleball courts. Yeah, and they host an annual tournament there called the Margaritaville <laughs> tournament. So if people go to YouTube and they put in Margaritaville pickleball, mm -hmm. they're going to get um, a lot of great pickleball to watch. Okay. and it's called it's sponsored by Margaritaville because um, Jimmy Buffett, in in his wisdom, and oh, I forgot to put this on. I was going to be wearing this when I talked to you. <laughs> Yeah, you, uh, you mentioned Jimmy Buffett, and you're like, oh, that's right. He's a dick. I have to put my meat shield <laughs> mask on. Anyway, go ahead. No, I don't know. I don't know about that. I don't know if he's a dick. All I know is his brand, his Margaritaville brand, mm -hmm. was was taken to um, retirement communities now are being called Margaritaville. And so because a lot of retired people. That feels super people, healthy, by the way. Yeah, you're just like, oh, yeah, you're retired. Why don't you curl into a bottle? Anyway. A and, bottle of margarita. And, yeah. and so anyway, so it's a spa. I mean, they have, they have, they have brand, Margaritaville brands has all kinds of food, yeah, yeah. not only booze, but foods too. And they have these retirement communities. I think that right now they're predominantly in Florida. 
And so retirement communities generally have a lot of pickleball players. And so they sponsored this big tournament. And the big players, you know, it's it's majority, the majority of players are are seniors, you know. I was going to ask. A lot of younger, yeah. yeah. But a lot of play, a lot of people today, they were all ages playing. In fact, there was a, they were grandparents playing with their little kids. It's a game that anybody can play. I have taught three generations at a time to play a grandpa, the kids, and the grandkids to play. Right. I th- because it doesn't take a lot. Right. And, and I think it's it's super inclusive, though. So, I it's mean, very it inclusive. means that the, it's very- the um, seniors can play and little kids can play. And exactly you, it right. doesn't have to just be, you know, peak performance 25. I like to no. rock climb. No. And- <laughs> no. Yeah, no. And, and they, but there are a lot of that. Those but the, people that but play they can it and play that's too. Great. And, and it's. Everybody yeah. can play. So that's. Uh, Everybody it, can kinda play. It's kind of cool that it is inclusive like that. Cause it's super inclusive. It's super inclusive. Yeah, like I say, I, I see all, uh, the courts around here, all ages. Like yesterday, the gal I taught was about 30, and she was saying that her parents play. And they retune, re, and so her parents are my age, 64-ish, okay. right? And so she plays with her parents, and her parents routinely spank her, but she never learned, really learned how to play. Right. So I gave her a lesson, and she was like, oh, that's what my mom meant. <laughs> oh, that's what my dad was saying. So, you know, she's going to get good and she'll, she'll be able to play with it. Right. Her. She'll go back slightly more competitive. And um, which is, yeah. I mean, that thing is, is if you're if you're a lifelong sports fan and you just you you're like, I just I want to play a team sport or I want to play a sport with somebody. I told Andy about it because Christina's like, you should come. Oh, you guys, you guys would <laughs> love it. You guys would really. And you don't really. I mean, as long as you, you know, it takes my, one of my best friends was a swimmer, only sw- and she biked. Never, no hand-eye coordination right. at all. I'm Within a good a few hockey weeks, sack player. I've got good. That, you know what? You'd be good. Yeah. Then you'd be good. You'd, you'd be, be good. Yeah. It doesn't take How a many lot. games do you Just play a little at, bit practice. at a crack? Do you go and you play like one game or you play like two <laughs> or three games? How many? Well, you know, a game, a game only goes to 11. Mm-hmm. So typically an average game is maybe, maybe 15 minutes. What? It could it could be less. Okay. It could be more. If it's a really competitive game when you're you know you're holding the say it's three to three yeah. for you know a while it could take it could take longer. But in general, it's a fifteen minute game. Fifteen minute half it's an a hour game. game. Yeah, at the most. And in a tournament, it's three. They play three. They play best of three right. in a tournament. Okay. You know, but in generally, you know, so so I mean, I'll typically. I'll if I'm if I want to make sure that I have a court and I don't have to share with anybody, I'll reserve a court for an hour, mm-hmm. and we'll play we'll play three sometimes four games. Okay, you know, and that's you know, and yeah, so it's it's really fun. It's really it's really easy to learn. Those there's other little rules, but the three main rules are: don't hurt yourself, two bounces on the serve, and the kitchen. Okay, the peop the mistakes that people make the most two most common mistakes people made it make is. They for the serving side will forget that they also have to wait for a bounce before they hit the ball. Yep, that's the right? two bounce because rule. they get excited. Yeah. yeah, they get excited. They're like, "I want to hit that ball," and they've run up, and then the ball is like, "Oh shit, I can't hit it." Right. And they forget, and they're excited. They're they're at the kitchen line, and they forget, and they step in after they've hit a ball on a fly. So those are the those, those are the noob mistakes that are made early on, and then well, and then and, you just and, kind of figure it out. Well, and yeah, they're the noob mistakes, but there are plenty of people, hello myself included, who get really excited, <laughs> and I forget <laughs> that I was supposed to wait for the ball to bounce before I returned it, or I don't realize how close I am to the net, or I'm, how close I am to the kitchen line, or my size elevens just go over, you know. <laughs> I mean, uh, this but. has been a delight. It's been an hour, by the way, Dar. Uh, what you oh should know. Wait a minute. I had other dork dumps. Yeah, Damn you, it. Okay. You'll have to come. Shit. It's uh, okay. so uh, <laughs> Darlene Vendania and uh, has uh, graced the dork forest. Dork, 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 dork. <laughs> and uh, you guys, it's at just Dar 826 and at Pickleball Dar or Pickleball Dar at gmail.com if you wish uh, to, and you live in the Bay Area and would like a lesson. Uh, yes. This has been a delight. And of course, it's always fun to talk to you and see you. So say hi to Peggy for me. Yes, I will. And I'm so glad that we got to, I was so glad that I was able to bring that gaggle of gals to your show at, um, 
Th yeah. Throckmorton not, or not Schlappers? No, Punchline. Oh, Punchline. punchline. That's Remember, right. I, I had that whole lineup of a dozen, dozen of my pals, and they were. I was so happy because I talk about you all the time, and I wear the she shirt, and they're like, "Now what is it now?" And I'm like, "Trust me, you'll like her. She reads a lot, and she's really funny." <laughs> you know, those are the big selling points for my friends. Right, and San Francisco so, Punchline always a good time as soon as it, as long as you can time. find the building. So good for them. That's right. And um, so, and Rangers, you know the rules out there. Take care of each other. My hat, my hat, my hat. They're dancing around my hat. <laughs> my hat, my hat, my hat. Well, what do you think of that? If it looks like a Mexican hat dance and it sounds like a Mexican hat dance, it's most likely a Mexican hat dance. So take off your hat and let's dance. Yay! Oh, my God. Thank we. You. Why don't we just call that as the end of the show?